do this yet. I got a timing to it. Think about it. The church hadn't started yet. The miracle happens, man, that affirmed that Jesus has risen from the dead. So there's a purpose behind it. When the man was born blind, was it because his parents, because they sinned? Or was it because this guy, he's just... He was born, he was sin. Jesus, is, again, Jesus says no, right? Remember when God told Joshua no? He gave multiple choice. No is not an answer to multiple choice, but sometimes we ask the wrong, ask the wrong questions. And, and, and I believe if we had said, you know, that blind man, who, you know, who, who sinned, this man or his parents? And Jesus said no. Neither one. You didn't give me, an, uh, give me the right answer. But he says, but that the glory of God might be manifest in him. He says, and so I think there's a, a time that you asked something else too. I can't remember what you said, but. Fearful, lazy. Yeah, you know, I, I personally don't think he was. You know, I, I think our society today is very much like the Pharisees. What's the cause of this? And we immediately just want to. Depressed, you know. The thing is, is what that tells me is if I ever have fear, God can't do a miracle for me. That's not true. I mean, thank God he does miracles for us more fearful. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God. God, we don't have to have everything just right together. I mean, it'll make you nervous trying to have everything together. Thank God he will deliver. Deliver us right where we are. Yes. Oh, you're praising God. Okay, all right. Amen. Well, in the Bible, in Acts 3, it lets you know the condition of the guy at the gate called you. I believe it said from his birth. Yeah. 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 So you could, right off the top, you know, it was an infirmity. It wasn't a uh, psychological condition. Yeah. It was a physical uh, yeah. infirmity that he had. And so, yeah, so it wasn't depression or anything. It was just he had a physical problem yeah. from the womb. Yeah, amen. Yeah. That's amen. It, right. Come on up. Hello. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank God for you guys. I really, really appreciate the oneness that you all carry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in ministry, like y'all just have it together, oh, and I it's coming out there. Yeah. And uh, you don't find that much in ministry. You can lower that thing down there. Oh, there we go. That was slow. Uh, as I was saying, you don't find that much in ministry where you have that oneness, and you don't feel that friction. Uh, between you two, so that that's beautiful. I wish I had it, but anyway, pray for me. Amen. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, my one of my questions is, and I don't want to offend no one. I um, just want to say it. Okay. Uh, one of my questions, or uh, you say your pet peeves and then get the job done, is uh, when will the body of Christ, or when will the church, no longer just feed among themselves and begin to get out and embrace the community and begin to embrace our, our neighborhood. Yeah. That's my concern. But Jesus ministered. You can always catch him in the synagogue, Amen. preaching to the people in the synagogue Amen. or the church people, minister to one another. But you always saw him, you say, I got to go to Samaria, I got to go here, right. I got to go there. Jesus was always out on the field. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, how old do the church have to be or the body of Christ have to be? Like you said, the baby still, the, the baby with the beard, the baby with the beard. How long is we going to be baby with the beard and continue to eat amongst one another and get out there and go the and get the people that are hurting and sick and lame? When are we going to get enough? Get out the bottle and go out there and do ministry like God has told us to do. That's one question. Okay. Go ahead, because she's addressing it to you guys. Go ahead and answer that one, then we'll go to the next one. Okay, all right. Yeah, so one of the things is, is we have, whenever you have poor practice, you have bad theology. Whenever you have bad praxology, you have bad theology. The reason why people are the church is practicing incorrectly, not going out to the community, is because they don't their theology is wrong. They don't understand that they think church is a building. They think church is something that happens one day a week. They have a bad theology, so they practice incorrectly. And so what happens is, if we understood that ecclesia means. God's called us to go out into the community and change society to change hearts of people. When you begin to disciple a mayor, when you begin to disciple and meet with them, you begin to talk and listen. 
You've got a reason that you made those policies. Where do they come from? You can have a conversation. You find out the root of it is a belief system. It's a theology. All of it is rooted in theology. So there's a bad theology that causes the church to feel comfortable and not have a different praxology. So if we want to change the practice, we can't deal with the practice. They, then they'll repeat the sin again. We've got to make sure the reason they're not going to go the community is because they don't have a proper theology that will inform them to act differently. So if we say, listen, do you know what the church is? It's an ecclesy. It's a called out people to meet out justice. It's not going to happen out there. We're not supposed to just vote people and they're going to do it. We're supposed to go out and live among the people and make a difference. The church, when there was hunger, they sent food. They sent help. The church realizes that an apostle, a pastor, whatever they, their title might be, they're not called a pastor. Hear this. An apostle, prophet, whatever the calling is, they're not called to lead a local fellowship. Yeah. That's part of it. That's the means to it. They're called to change a city. Yeah. If you look at the Bible, it says they wrote to the apostle of the city of Ephesus. That's a whole city. Those, those letters written to those angels were the this to the Angel of Ephesus. It wasn't. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, a flapping uh, wing angel. That's right. That's right. It was an apostle. That's right. And Angelus sent one messenger yep. to the messenger over this city. We got to begin to adopt and say, "This is my city, not just my church." What's the difference? It means now, if there's a financial problem, we say, "What's the theology that caused the financial problem?" What is the theology that corrects the financial problem? We need to begin to have financial teaching. We need to meet people where they're at. We need to begin to say, what's the, what is, you've got to become incarnate in the city. That's the word incarnation. It's not just God becoming man, but it's us. Think about what God becoming man was. He got in our flesh. He got in our mess. That's what we've got to do. We've got to get in people's mess. Not become the mess that they are, but get involved in their arena. Say, what is the... Do we know the demographics of this city, of Joliet? Do we know how many people live here? Do we know the proximity of how many people, what kind of income they make? Do we know what kind of industries are here? What might change the city? Can we begin to fast and pray? Can we have a, some Nehemiahs to be raised up and say, let's get the vision for the need so that when we meet with them and the money is there, God will give money to a people who have assessed the problem. Yes. So we've got to I was going to say that about being incarnate, but I was also going to say that uh, the church is not just this building or all of you corporately. You are corporately the church, but we are individually the church, too. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And so what we have to do is that I'm really big on responsibility. What the, the sign of maturity, we were talking about don't be a baby with a beard. The sign of maturity is the acceptance of responsibility. When your kids start uh, doing stuff without you telling them, you think they, they're growing up. That's the acceptance of responsibility. Yeah. So I, I'm really big on responsibility. You don't have to tell me it's time for me to do something. Right. I accept that responsibility. So as, as individuals in the church, it's, in the church the church is made up of individuals. As individuals, sometimes we wonder, why is it the church, meaning the leadership, not doing something? Uh -oh. And God is saying, uh -oh. you're all the church. So when the church individually start talking to people on your job, when you start individually going out, talking to your neighbors about Jesus Christ, that is the church going out. The, corporately, sure, you should do something. But we also got to remember that maturity is accepting responsibility. Uh, Pastor Moffat isn't responsible for my neighbor. He's in, God put that neighbor in.